as July arrives once again in London, city workers' thoughts turn to escaping the odd day of stifling heat before it rains for the rest of the summer. But for artists, their thoughts turn to escaping too the English capital's financial square mile. And for Miroslav Bolka in particular, the city offers the greatest escape of all. Bolka's recording of Elmer Bernstein's famous theme tune to the movie The Great Escape can be heard down this alleyway, if the noise of the city outside doesn't drown it out. In its eighth consecutive year, sculpture in the city is bigger than ever, with 18 installations dotted around the square mile until May next year. And to mark the centenary of British women's suffrage this year, exactly half of the contributions exhibited are by female artists. Like Sarah Lucas's Percival, a life-size model of a china ornamental horse with Lucas's signature double entendre marrows in the back. Jill Bradley's beautiful collection of fluorescent discs illustrated with designs of 18th century glasshouses, aptly surrounded by 21st century ones. And Marina Abramovich, who exhibits the first sound piece hosted by Sculpture in the City in a tree that has hosted Sculpture in the City exhibits more than once in the past. Progress indeed, compared to last year, when Karen Tang, whose delightful synapse returns to the exhibition this year, was one of only two female artists amongst 16 contributors. Several of this year's exhibits explores the form of the body and the concept of its parts. Thomas J. Price's stunning Newman collection finds shifting votive one and two giving steely stares from underneath the Leadenhall building, with votive three looking rather forlorn in the direction of his friends a few hundred metres away by undershaft. Juliana Sequeira Lecce's hand and footprints punch their way out of this obelisk in Mitre Square, and Richard Rome's Pepper Rock, made from parts of other sculptures by the artist, is certainly keeping one eye on the traffic along Bishop's Gate. Along the length of Henwich Lane, Claire Jarrett demonstrates how much material is required to cover the body in her mesmerising piece Sari Garden as well as showing how much space a sari might require to dry in a clothes line. And lighting up a passageway near Bury Court, Tracy Emin tantalises passers-by with talk of erogenous zones. There are plenty of animal bodies and their parts too in the collection, nearly all found here along Undershaft. Nancy Rubins gave her unmissable installation of twisted creatures a tongue twister of a name, Crocodilius philodendrus. An eclectic and seemingly chaotic collection of predators and prey, on closer inspection one may find a sense of harmony here, as the animals seem to be clinging onto each other rather than trying to get away. Some even seem quite pleased with their situation. In fact, the only creatures here who show any signs of anxiety are the human passers-by, unsure what to make of the whole thing. The inanimate body is also explored in the collection. Jean-Luc Moulien celebrates the sculpted body of the automobile, although how anyone is supposed to drive this away without any wheels is anyone's guess. And this section, from the body of an Airbus 300 by Mikhail Brigelis, shows just how little room there is for six bodies to sit along the seating row that takes up this width of space on such an aircraft. All of this year's exhibits are, as always, free to peruse night and day, open to all, and there are stacks to see and discover. That one's called Stack Blues. 
never mind. 